Welcome to Worldly News Tonight. I'm Chad the Alcoholic. And I'm rarely inebriated. Our top story, the second coming. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Not just that, rarely. But also reports have come in that mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. For more, we go to Bling Flinger, our reporter in the field. Thanks, Jim. The second coming. Hardly are those words out when a vast image out of the Spiritus Mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with a lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving in slow thighs while all about it. Real shadows of the indignant desert birds. Fascinating. I heard that there were even reports that the darkness dropped. That's right, Jim. The darkness drops again. But now I know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. But bling, that merely begs the question, and... That's exactly right. Rarely. And what rough beast, its hour come round at last, slouches toward Bethlehem to be born! Thank you, Neil. Keep us in the loop. Will do. For Worldly News Tonight, I'm Bling Flinger. Clearly, in front of a, 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 a green screen, clearly speaking into a hairbrush as a microphone. This is Worldly News Tonight with the Friday Morning Nameless. Greetings and welcome to Worldly News Tonight. We come to you with a story so shocking that it can't be true. Between the decades of growing disdain for the political arena, the longing for new and competent national leadership, and not least cosmic chaos, a stunning turn of events have unveiled our new president-elect. President Suck My Ass. That's right, President Jeffrey Suck My Ass. And tonight... With unrest in the streets, ex explanations seem paramount. paramount. After last week's coronal mass ejection and nationwide blackouts, it seems the only record of any ballots to survive the solar flare were found on a server in the basement of the Pentagon. No one is sure how this lone server survived the solar catastrophe, and stranger yet, paper ballots were tallied in Los Angeles, California, of all places with Suck My Ass written in on nearly all of the ballots. All registered voters were known to be living in this homeless shelter. In our investigation, it seems the voters were allegedly paid in chicken tenders and ranch dressing to vote. One of the homeless voters, Stephen Jolly, commented, quote, Hell yeah, I voted for Suck My Ass. I just want my damn chicken tenders with ranch. Further investigation reveals that a coalition was formed by the homeless community to, quote, stick it to the man. This resulted in 258 votes for suck my ass. 34, blah, 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 and 34, your mom. Oddly enough, President Suck My Ass seems willing and capable of doing the job. 54-year-old Nebraska resident Jeffrey Suck My Ass is a former transgender woman who seems to hold no disdain for the LGBTQIA community and has in 2022 transitioned back into becoming a man because, quote, a woman has the right to do with her body what she wishes. Also, Vishnu told me to. Among the many insights Vishnu brought to President Suck My Ass, the last was, quote, go Christian. The now currently Catholic father of four, husband said, I have an economic doctorate, doctorate from Evergreen University. He's both been registered Democrat and Republican as well as independent in the past. All President Suck My Ass had to say on the topic of becoming president-elect was, 
Policy, policy, policy. Back to you, Neil. Previously on Game of Trolls. You're not empathizing with me. Now we all know the rules of the game of trolls, so without further ado, our first contestant needs no introduction. He's a feature, not a bug. A perennial guest in every Christian home. The personification of Sam Harris's revenge. The village corner atheist. I give you the T. Grogan experience. The T. Grogan podcast. Check it out. The T. Grogan experience. Utah by day, T. Grogan by night. All day. And I'm interested in PLC because I really don't understand what it's all about. I see a lot of very incoherent things being said here. Everybody nods their head to and say, wow, that's profound, man. It's like Seinfeld. It's a, it's a show about nothing. Back in the bad old days, those people would have been locked up in asylums. I once told this second contestant that the most appealing facet of his character was his self-awareness. I give you the Steve Mr. McGee. That little girl. That's is a pretty, a... Uh, pretty bold take. You should I keep, keep, keep the dog balls and the the Terminator. About I think all, all assholes are actually softies. I, I'm a jerk in my mind a lot. Well, yeah. Who knows? Well, maybe I'm AI. Do you know that? Uh, no, nah, you're way too real. Have... And for our third and fourth contestants, ladies and gentlemen, Every so often, we have the rare gift of an interaction that is produced that has such tantalizing joy, such tangible substance, so sweet you can almost taste it, tangentially speaking. And thus so, I give you Chad, the girl dad, and Peter Penrose back. The song is called I Like Tangerines. I like tangerines. Was that happy? No. So, I like tangerines. I like what? tangerines. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that? I like tangerines. Do you know what I mean? I like tangerines because they're juicy. Tangerine, you are my dream. Tangerine, you taste supreme. Tangerine. You're in my dreams, oh tangerine. Take your beer and take your wine. I've got something that tastes divine. I like tangerines because they're juicy. Wait, I forgot the words already. I like tangerines. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I like tangerines because they're juicy. Um. Yeah? Yes. Wait, what's the first line again? I like tangerines. I like tangerines. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I like tangerines. I like tangerines. Because they're juicy. Because they're juicy. I like tangerines. Oh. I like tangerines. They are juicy. I like tangerines. Do you know what I mean? We're going all over the place. Um, I, I just I'm never sorry. had rain in my jeans, so I, I don't know if I'd sing that. No, but. I take your beer, you can take your wine, but I got mm, something better, something better in mind. It's you there. The name of this song is. I like tangerines. Do you know what I mean? 
No, explain it further. Thank you for that rousing left brain deconstruction, Mr. Chad. And with that, we begin our monthly rankings. Coming in at number four, no surprise here, we have Dutty Grogan Experience. But our brains are still back in the Stone Age. And number three, oh, this is also going to be, uh, well, a mu well, I'm actually showing the, it's Mr. Steve McGee. What do you have to say, Steve? Do you have a stable signal? Right. Steve, you're always having, you're always having difficulties. Okay, and for these final two, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this was a toss-up. I really just threw the cards up in the air and, Tried to see which magnet stuck on what. And for this, I'm giving the number two spot to Chad the Girl Dad. And our number one, our number one, ladies and gentlemen, we have Peter Penrose. Back so that concludes our segment today on the game of trolls and if you like this segment please leave a comment below and who knows your comment might be sufficient to garner your own participation on next month's game of trolls a new episode of the lord of spirits podcast condemned the 1996 chicago bulls as Nephilim, direct descendants of Shimi Aza and the other watchers who bound themselves with an oath. For truly they were the men of renown. Also, I hear Dennis Rodman has six toes. This just in. It turns out that I may actually be suffering from a case of split, uh, split personality disorder. The possible reveal came to me today after a while simultaneously working on my job and talking on the Discord with my friends. The homeowner of the job asked, Did you invite someone here? Did some other coworker come out? No, I said. Why do you ask? I, I'm sorry, but were you talking to someone while you were in there? Certainly, I said. Oftentimes, I'm talking on my phone while I'm working. Oh, so that's the second voice I heard, she said. I thought you invited someone into my house. The both of us awkwardly chuckling, I replied, I don't know what other voice you heard, but I've always got this earbud in. And she then suspiciously said with a smile and sarcastic tone, Oh, okay. I guess I'm just hearing things and making it all up in my head. Then walked away, shaking her head, laughing to herself. Over to you, David. Reporting on reporting, Clara has just received a $78,000 university grant to continue studying the corner. The money will be spent on interns, conferences, a bus pass for Grimm, 87 luchador masks, and keeping Livingstone's church afloat. Honestly, not the worst use of university funding. And another story. Today I was caught off guard and startled by the erratic behavior of the homeowner whose house I've been recently working on. While I was setting tile in Mrs. Smith's house, she seemed to be in a verbal altercation with some unseen force, laughing maniacally and asking the flowered pot at the end of the hall, did you let someone in my house? Are you talking to someone? My employer told me that under no circumstances was I to have actual contact with this woman, as it might trigger a psychotic break from which there might be no return. <clears throat> Good golly, I'm glad that joke is done. I can't tell if it's just weird or bad. Mostly because while I'm writing this, I'm listening to the latest Andre 3000 offering, New Blue Sun. It kind of sounds like if the movie Under Silver Lake was actually a piece of music, but only really bad and boring. Over to you, David. In local female news, the small but essential group of women in the corner get together every Thursday and make fun of you. For further details, a representative of the women has agreed to join us. Thank you, Cassandra. Pleasure to be invited, finally. Could you tell us about the meeting, uh, how it went this past Thursday? Sure. Well, a bunch of us, Cassidy, Mandy, Sherry, 
Sandy, the Orthodox grandma, Andrea with the bangs, we all met up and reviewed some of John Verveke's material that felt relevant for mothers and wives. And we realized for women, perspectival knowing plays an especially important role. And we also all agreed that your haircut needs work. I mean, I'm wearing a mask, so. It's Chad's mask. I, I know that, that's that's why I'm wearing it. It's a, it's a so bit. So you're just gonna copy Chad? That's interesting. Thank you, Cassandra. You know what? Maybe the corner doesn't need more women after all. Just a thought. <laughs> In other news, Ron Copperman was arrested last night after attempting to reveal secret sacred truths of the TLC to an unknown sociologist. Hold on a second. It's the cops. Oh no! Oh, Ron Copperman, minister, I set the alarm off. Oh my god, dude. What's your name, sir? Ron Copperman. Yeah. 18 -8. TLC authorities have indicated that the copper man is being held at an undisclosed facility until he repents of his false prophecy. Back to you, Tim. This week, tragedy hit the corner again when another hippie took way too many psychedelics and became an Orthodox Christian. In time, this young man will bestow infinite blessings to his community and will one day die, and immediately be embraced by the one who spoke all into being, resulting finally in the bliss of theosis. But for right now, the dude is completely unbearable, and it'd be great if he just settled down for a bit. And now, brought to you by the one and only WBF, the James Beard Award. Now, as we all know, the James Beard Award for the rating of the beards originally stems from the enviable beard of James VI as he was shut up in the Tower of Babel for 40 days and 40 nights writing the King James Bible. Now, I'm sure you know how this works already, but comments below equal to one vote, one point. But thumbs up for those comments? Half a point. Firth up, surfs up, Jeremy first. But, hate to break it to you, Sometimes, because the Bible tells us so, I know the Firth gonna be last. Full of problems. Secondarily, Mr. Pauline Vanderklein Claymore. Now, I apologize, Paul, for revealing the entirety of your name, but for the purposes of transparency, you cannot claim the James Beard Award without revealing your white stone name. Oh, blast and all that. Now you see what I mean. <laughs> Next up, we have Michael Santori. Sorry, sorry, Michael Sartori. Satire, Tori, Santorical, Tyrical, Santoric, Satyr, Satyr, Full Metal Jacket. For relaxing times, make it Santori time. And finally, but finishingly, we have Gaius Grimm of the fourth LARPing Congressional Protocol. Griswold Gaius Grimm, nobody's grimmer this Halloween season. Griswold Gaius Grimm, he grimaces even when he wins. Ooh. Ah. By Merlin's beard, cast your votes in the comments below and let the chips and the hair fall where they may. In today's community report brought to you by Relevance Realization, stalwart corner spear mogul philanthropist Jacob Federici had this to say. Uh, let me just say this. Chad, please don't watch this video. Thanks, Jacob. Cognition received. Relevance Realization, today's leading distributor of sense and cognition, a framework that helps you focus on relevant aspects of the world while ignoring irrelevant information. Relevance Realization, turning ill-defined problems into well-defined problems. Also in today's community report, Clara, a resident sociologist, had some relevant things to say to the world. Um, so this is my kitchen. You can even see that there is a fly trap behind me. That's something I would have removed if I had really thought about this because that is disgusting. Um, right now I am roasting chicken to eat later today. And I, I feel like I need to justify that to myself and to the world. 
to the world, like literally to the world because I'm live streaming. Special Corner Update. David J. Buzatil of Jacob's Corner, still not Jewish. We will be sure to keep you updated if his condition changes. In the Friday Morning Nameless newest series, 30 Minutes, Harris and Raphael discuss the importance of 30-minute time segments for 30 minutes on a 30-minute show. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to 30 Minutes, a new experimental conversation format that tries to explore in, in 30 minutes or so, a single great idea, concept, or, or principle at a time. For those who don't know me, hello, I am Apps, uh, also known as the dude behind uh, Upcycle Club, and I am here with my fellow host, the amazing Afraid, Afraid Pilotson. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Today in the Secret Lives of Podcasters, we've learned more about the vocation of Mark T. Parker. This segment was also brought to you by Low Hanging Fruit, a product meant to deliver bad and uninteresting jokes. Head over to bluechurch.org and enter promo code Worldly News to get your low hanging fruit today. Over to you, David. In Jordan B. Peterson news, JBP has been a quarter member this whole time. He's actually been lurking in the comments under the pseudonym Maps of Memeing. He usually lurks with only the occasional LOL, but three weeks ago, he publicly chewed out someone on Grizz's stream for using the wrong emoji at the wrong time. Despite his realized presence, none of us here in the corner will stop doing impressions of him, and we have collectively agreed we won't pretend to like his random song. A recent inquiry from Corner Wives asks, how much longer do you think this will go? It wasn't really a question, more a reminder that your mother is coming over later today, and you promised to clean out the spare room. Remember, Corner Lurkers, when you notice a husband going on mute and looking off to the left, nodding a few times, that's what's going on. Always. An update from last month's news program. Matthew Parlato, in response to a joke saying we didn't know what he was getting at, wrote a reply that was 408 words long and ended in a Maya Angelou quote and followed up by saying, quote, may the Christians in Ethiopia thrive when it all burns, end quote, which begs the question, like, what is he getting at? Hezi Spiro has been unmasked and revealed to be actually a Midwestern Episcopalian named Christopher. Corner member John A., who's mostly found in the comments, broke the story in a viral video. I believe we will show a clip from that video now. So I googled something Kesi said online and nothing was really adding up it was only after i researched things for hours that i realized that the talmud quotes that he was saying and the hebrew words were just something that he was making up on the spot and no one was taking notice officials have noted that how it is that this wasn't caught by jacob federici yosef or even that goy, David J. Buzatil, only begs further questioning. So my screen name was actually supposed to be a reference to Levi's jeans, um, but with autocorrect, uh, one thing led to the next, and uh, now to be honest, this lie has completely got out of control. Not sure what to do. You know, with this revelation in mind, that voice he's doing is super offensive. Breaking news, since first reporting the story earlier, seven more Eastern Orthodox psychonauts have joined the corner. I think there's that, that lady who, I forget, has she been on PVK's channel or she's been around? She was like super into psychedelic stuff. 
and then basically e had Emily, Emily Verduin, uh, Mud Hut. Sherry, Sherry. I've Girlfriend. heard both of those. I know who both of those people, and that's actually also not who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember too some many. other person. <laughs> There's too, too, too many. many. Thank you for joining us in the All Spin Zone. As we leave, a congratulation goes out this week to the three very special corner members who aren't on the autism spectrum. Must be nice! Well, thanks everybody for joining us for the news. It's a lot of fun. I would really love if you'd like to contribute uh, to Neil and David and myself. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. <clears throat>